My name is Melissa, a 30-year-old working for a foreign investment firm. I married my husband, Miles, two years ago, who works as a civil servant. However, he is not a full-time employee and has to renew his contract every year. At the end of every year, he is apprehensive about whether his contract will be renewed. Miles' family strongly believes in the superiority of public service. His parents are retired county workers, and his sister currently holds a position in the city office. So you could say they have an unwavering commitment to public service. There is some degree of disdain from them towards me as I work in a private sector firm. We have been living with Miles's family since we got married, and they tend to belittle my job every chance they get. Isn't it embarrassing to be working for a foreign company as an American? And it's an investment firm, right? Isn't that just a place obsessed with making money? His mother would often say. People who work for private companies are just those who couldn't get a public service job. And those working in foreign companies couldn't even land a job with a domestic company. They're just there because they have no other choice, she reasoned. It seems my husband, who grew up in this kind of environment, also believes public service to be superior. Even though his job isn't stable and his salary isn't high, he clings to his current unstable job. I once asked Miles when he was growing anxious around the fiscal year end, wouldn't you feel more secure if you became a full-time employee at a regular company rather than staying as a part-timer at public service? To which he firmly replied, I'd rather be unemployed than work in the private sector. Miles has not told his parents that he's a part-timer, and he insisted that I also keep it a secret. Despite having no significant position, he bragged about fictitious promotions to preserve his pride. I personally don't think he needs to lie about such things, but it seems like he wants to establish some sort of status so he can be deemed someone worthy of respect by his parents and younger sister. He never shown me his payslip, but when I saw the amount transferred into our account, it's clear that his salary is quite low. Since Miles has been promoted to section chief, his salary must have increased significantly, right? How much is he earning now? His father asked one evening. Caught off guard, Miles blurted out my salary instead. His father was surprised. Is that how much one can earn nowadays? He asked. I don't know exactly how much a public section chief earns, but I know that my salary is quite high as a bond trader. A significant portion of my income is commission-based. Recently, I've been generating consistent profits and earning a considerably higher salary compared to an average employee. Upon hearing the figure my husband stated, his mother commented, it's a different era, so we can't compare directly, but it seems like Miles is highly valued. She seemed quite proud. Hearing this, Miles' sister, who works at the city office, chimed in, see, my brother, who is working at the county office, definitely earns more. He might even be at the department head level if it were the city office. This remark seemed to make Miles uncomfortable as he had unintentionally revealed my salary. Realizing his mistake, he quickly changed the topic. Oh, speaking of which, I saw someone from my housing manufacturer around here the other day. Are we planning to remodel this house? He offered. Indeed, there was a salesperson from a housing manufacturer company who had visited us recently. To divert my in-laws from discussing Miles's income, I decided to help him and steered the conversation towards home improvement. If we are considering a renovation, I'd suggest the kitchen, I added. My mother-in-law shouted at me before I could finish speaking, know your place as a daughter-in-law and don't butt in on family discussions. All you need to do is keep quiet and do as you're told. It seemed that my formidable mother-in-law disliked everything I did or said. The main reason seemed to be because I wasn't a civil servant. She didn't seem to like the fact that I was receiving all of Miles' salary and giving him an allowance. Believing Miles' words that he was earning a lot of money, she had made up her mind that I was the one managing his salary. In reality, Miles' modest salary mostly went towards his personal spending, while I was shouldering almost all the living expenses. My sister-in-law didn't contribute at all to the living expenses. 
Why would you take living expenses from us when we're living on a pension? Miles is making so much. You don't need it, my mother-in-law would say, showing no intention to pay. They don't have to pay rent, and I could manage with my salary alone, but it felt unfair. I wasn't allowed to participate in the discussion about our home renovation this time, so I protested. We went to the kitchen to clean up after dinner. Neither my mother-in-law nor my sister-in-law helps with the housework, so I hurried home after work to cook, clean, and do laundry. In this respect, it was helpful to work for a foreign-owned company. As long as you performed well, you didn't have to work overtime, and you could always go home on time. I didn't bring work home either, and it was good that I could clearly separate work from private life. Miles, on the other hand, brought his work home and worked on his computer, even on his days off. I was worried if it was okay for him to bring work data home in this day and age. When I asked him, he said, I can't help it because I get yelled at if I work overtime, and even more so if I don't finish on time, and added sharply, It's not your concern, so don't butt in. I was the one who got yelled at in return. Miles had been particularly grumpy lately and would snap at me whenever I tried to talk to him. He even yelled at me when I tried to ask about our housing issue he had been discussing with his in-laws. Just like mom said, it's none of your business. You just need to follow what's been decided, he snapped. I was frustrated with Miles, who never told me anything while I handled the living expenses and housework. After a while, a person from the house building company came to the in-law's house with a computer. He discussed the layout and other aspects of the house with everyone except me. When I brought them tea and tried to sneak a peek, they immediately yelled at me. You don't need to look, just go away. I couldn't tell much from the quick glance I got, but I was surprised to see that it seemed to be a floor plan of a new house and not a renovation plan of my in-law's home. For some time now, my father-in-law had been saying that their house was getting cramped and he wanted to get it rebuilt, but I didn't think he was serious. It seems that my in-laws, both of whom had quit their jobs as civil servants, received a generous retirement allowance and planned to build and live in a new house with that money. In addition to their retirement allowances, they hadn't used much of their pension since I married into the family, so I thought they had plenty of funds. I tried not to get involved as much as possible. One thing that did bother me, though, was whether Miles' sister would still be living with us in their new home. She is now 28, and it might be time for her to get married, but I haven't heard any talk about that, so it seems highly likely she will continue living with us, even in their new home. It wouldn't be a problem if she helped with the housework, but she tends to dump everything on me and then complains about it. She's as troublesome as my mother-in-law. I wish she would get married sooner, but recently I overheard my father-in-law discussing the situation with a home builder. Can we add extra rooms so that when our daughter finds a husband, they can also live here? Ideally, we'd like a house where my wife and I, our son, and our daughter and her future husband can all live together, my father-in-law concluded. I was shocked to hear this, especially as it seemed that they were planning to live with my sister-in-law even after her marriage. I can only imagine how big a house for three families would be. It probably wouldn't fit on our current property. Considering that they will build the house using my in-law's retirement fund and my sister-in-law's earnings, I couldn't participate in the discussion about the house plan. Still, I can't help but think how much of a hassle cleaning will be. Then my husband and his family decided to go and visit the showcase room and construction site while telling me to stay home. It's none of your business, my mother-in-law shouted at me with a nasty grin, expecting a retort, and looked annoyed when I remained quiet. Construction of the new home proceeded without any information being shared with me, and my in-laws and sister-in-law started preparing to move out. My husband didn't seem to be preparing for anything, and that bothered me. Don't you need to be getting ready to move out? I asked. Why would I do it? That's your job, my husband snapped back at me. 
I was taken aback since he didn't even tell me when and where we were moving. From then on, I started preparing for the move whenever I had time, but I made sure to separate my husband's things from mine. I'd completely lost trust in my husband from this whole new home move-out incident, and I could no longer bear my mother-in-law's terrible attitude. Even when I asked my husband about where we were moving, he just said, You don't need to know, just be prepared. I gathered from the conversations at mealtimes that the move was approaching, but it was strange that they didn't tell me, the wife, anything. Maybe they didn't tell me because they think of me as a maid. The moving service arrived one day, and that was when I learned that we were moving. While I hurriedly tidied up the dishes from breakfast, my mother-in-law said, We're buying new ones, so you can leave those. And are you planning to move into our new home with us? She smirked. That was the moment I became certain that they hadn't told me about their new home or the moving date because they intended to kick me out. Seeing my husband standing behind my mother-in-law silently grinning and saying nothing, I wondered if he had the same intentions. Well, I had anticipated something like this, so I had already prepared my things separately. Without a hint of agitation, I looked back at her. I despise everything about you. From now on, we're going to live as a family without you. Do whatever you want, my mother-in-law, looking quite displeased, shouted at me. Her daughter, my sister-in-law, watched bored, perhaps expecting me to break down and beg to stay. My mother-in-law was not pleased with my reaction. You're a parasite relying on Miles's paycheck since the day you got married. Get out now. We need Miles's salary to pay off the mortgage on our new home. Parasites like you are a nuisance, she hissed, noticeably angry, her face turning red. I had already planned on leaving, but the news of my husband's salary repaying the loan almost made me burst out laughing. My husband seemed shocked, not knowing that his salary will be used to repay the loan. He stared at his mother, then looked down, unable to tell her the truth. From his reaction, I understood that my in-laws were planning to let Miles, whom they considered a high earner, take on the mortgage repayments without using their retirement funds. The prospect of how they were going to handle the mortgage repayments became somewhat exciting to me. With a smile, I replied, Understood. I will divorce Miles, and you can all move to your new place by yourselves. My mother-in-law, not liking my smile, seemed to want to say more, but my father-in-law and sister-in-law escorted her out of the house. I told Miles, who was left behind, I'll bring the divorce papers, so give me the address of your new place. I have no idea what your magnificent new home looks like, so I would like to see it once, I added. He reluctantly told me the address as I spoke gleefully. With little luggage left, I had a friend help me move out using her car. I made sure to switch and have all the bills go under Miles' name from mine, utility, and everything. Returning to my parents' house for the time being, I decided to head to the address Miles had given me to have him sign the divorce papers. Their new house was impressively large, as it was meant to accommodate three families, and its majestic architecture was simply breathtaking. As soon as my mother-in-law spotted me, she rushed over, yelling, What are you doing here, you parasitic wife? Ignoring her outburst, I asked Miles to sign the divorce papers. Reluctantly, he signed them as his mother continued. I knew it. A non-civil servant wife is useless. Sign quickly and send her away. I retorted at her. Such a splendid new house. The payments must be a real burden, right? Can Miles' salary cover it? Snide, I watched as she reddened once again in anger. I don't want your business. Take the divorce papers and leave immediately, she commanded. I wanted to watch my pale-faced ex-husband a bit longer, but with his mother on the verge of exploding, I took the divorce papers and submitted them to City Hall while starting to search for a new house. After all that had happened, I lost any desire to get married again, so I chose a studio apartment to enjoy living alone. There was a nice place near my workplace, 
so I moved in immediately. Without anyone to push chores on me or anyone bragging about being a civil servant, life was peaceful. Just as I was starting to forget all about my ex-husband, I received a call from an unknown number. Melissa, can you come back to me? I can't even make the mortgage payments, let alone electricity and water bills. My home phone and cell phone have been disconnected, and I'm calling you from my friend's phone now, my ex-husband Miles begged. Rather than relying on me, he should have asked his parents or his sister for help. Why don't you ask your sister who works in public service to help you out? Plus, your parents must have had their retirement funds and social security, right? I retorted coldly. Actually, my parents don't have any of their retirement funds left, and my sister doesn't have any extra money because she's also dealing with her own debt, he awkwardly admitted. Apparently, Miles's parents had fallen victim to an investment scam, losing most of their retirement funds. Miles's sister, thinking she didn't need to contribute to her parents' finances, had been buying excessively using revolving credit, resulting in her acquiring substantial debt. Hearing that I worked in investment, my mother-in-law was openly hostile. Now I wonder if it was because she had been duped by an investment scam. Moreover, perhaps out of pride in their public service job, they tried to maintain their status by purchasing luxury items. Miles's parents also had debt and were using their social security checks to make their payments. I was surprised to learn that Miles's sister, despite her youth, had been buying branded goods on credit. Actually, I've been let go. I'm unemployed now, Miles added. He had been terminated from his job this year because he was caught working from home with the data he had taken from the office. He should have stopped when I warned him about it. It's not surprising, given he was taking confidential data out of the office. Anyway, even before Miles lost his job, his family was struggling financially without my income. Miles never told his parents that he was a part-timer. His parents also hid the fact that they lost all their retirement funds from getting scammed, and even his younger sister hid the fact that she was in great debt. Everyone in the public service family, full of ego, had a deep secret. They somehow managed when I was around, but after they moved to their new home and I left, their financial struggles became apparent. And as their last resort, Miles has now reached out to me. Of course, I had no intention of getting back with Miles, so I flat out refused and hung up. Even after that, he called repeatedly, but eventually stopped after I kept ignoring him. A while later, when I passed by their new house, I saw a for sale sign. Talking to a home builder who was there, it turned out that they couldn't pay the mortgage and had to sell it quickly, but they still had debt remaining. Gosh, that family, let me tell you. They boasted about how well off they were, but when they couldn't make their mortgage payments, they quickly sold off their place and even troubled a relative who was their co-signer, said the builder with a sigh. Apparently, when they took out the loan, they had their relatives co-sign, putting the burden on them. The word got around to all the relatives, and with their previous boast about being public servants, they're now looked down upon particularly because the person who co-signed worked in the private sector and ended up bearing the burden. Sitting back at home, I couldn't help but smirk at the thought of how those three, shunned by their relatives and unable to brag about their public service jobs anymore, might be faring now.